Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Trailmaker, and I am here with a great match. This is the finals of the ESL for week one. And we have, representing NATO, the clan BPT, represented by Robin30, and TI, TI, who we named TT, and their opponents, playing as Pact, representing the color red, are the No Unit Clan, representing, of course, by Lemieux and Werner Weinhold. Now, both are very, very good teams. And overwhelmingly, one of the themes from the tournament so far has been a lot of hel double helicopter rushes. And it's very, very popular and very successful at wiping out a lot of amazing opponents. And that will stay probably next tournament until people really get a hold on how to beat this stuff. Uh, of course, there was a North American and a European ladder. Uh, I haven't really seen anything from the North American ladder, truth be told. Uh, pretty underwhelmingly low competition. The European ladder, however, is the best of the best stuff, and this is our final matchup. So pretty excited to be casting this, and uh, any moment now they'll start picking out their unit builds that we'll be seeing, of course, this is Highway to Oslo. It's a modified version of the old classic Highway to Hell. And it, it's got these really cool features. One is that the reinforcement area on the side here is a big open field that can be crossed by tanks. There's also a great place to stage AT to deflect them. There's all sorts of bushes in the way to also stop this. And there's ridges, of course. Lots of angry ridges that have to be avoided. There's also an opportunity to bring infantry through the woods to block here. And so this ends up being a pretty big uh, staging ground for this. Now, of course, this is conquest style, which means that the most important points on the map are one of these two-point bases, which ironically, even though we switched to conquest, people generally don't seem to be fighting for. We'll see if either of these go for this. Of course, uh, for these players to fight for these two-point bases, they will have to grab this delta base and, of course, push through the bushes either and or through an open field here. Um, I'm not going to lie and say that this map is not heavily favored towards NATO, but it is very, very heavily favored towards NATO. Not enough that a good player can't beat a small player, but that two equally, all things being equal, both players are sucking. And they're not picking up their unit builds because I haven't hit the start button. Oopsie. And it looks like uh, we have a call for attack here on the main base of theirs, so I think they're a little bit confused here. Actually going to be rolling, rolling out some of these Mistrals, a few infantry, actually a lot of infantry. Uh, this could be a modified helicopter. It is. Ah, whoa. Ho, 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 ho. This changes everything. So we have uh, a very modified helicopter rush coming in from uh, Robin and TT. One, this is four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen... 14, 16, 18, 20, 24 helicopters here. And I, I don't think it's necessary that they will all in with this. There's a high chance they will, but it's not necessary. And looks like um, a, something very similar, but not so many helicopters. Looks like this is actually intended almost entirely just to take the middle here. And in fact, all these helicopters could be defensive as well. Just insanely high amounts of them for for defense, which is weird, but it's absolutely possible. Uh, so from our pack players, we looks like we're seeing pretty standardized stuff from no unit. Lots of airborne infantry to try and grab those four bases. He has one, two, three commands on the map currently compared to the two of NATO. And a nice bit of AA does not want to get swamped. Actually, a lot of AA. He's got three Tunguskas and a Sleeka here or Shilka, sorry, and lots of infantry. You're going to love on those infantry. And here comes a lot of Air Force, and this is something that has become really common in team play. The absolute domination of the air is almost necessary. Of course, they're sending forward some MiGs to try and intercept any Air Forces, and they're sending some Napalm Bombers. The idea here is to hit the road. They want to hit the road where they believe that the enemy will eventually have to come, and this way they can grab a forward location. And here comes the double bombs. Looks like they'll be hitting exact same spots on the road and actually timed this off perfectly able to catch all the forces in it this is huge able to trap all these forces stunned in the fire this is going to be some pretty big 
shoes for the NATO players to fill here as everything is coming in very weak and lots of stuff is dying here and this has overwhelmingly become the most dominant tactic in the game. Just bombing these roads knew exactly where they would be. I would not be surprised if no unit practiced as a clan for this very, very map doing this exact same thing. And it's going to see a battle of the air forces and this is realistically the only forces that NATO has on the ground right now. Plus three being gained here by no unit as we're able to not really stop infantry, but they will secure this one very, very important delta base as looks like blue will in fact take echo. Now, there is a little bit of a weird uh, mishmash here. Uh, in order for no unit to stop Delta uh, Gulf, they have to have a position here at Delta to swing in here. So that means getting forces all the way from Bravo, so off the road here, and here. And the fastest way, of course, is through this way, which is through Echo. So if Blue can stage enough forces here, he can slow down a lot of the efforts here. Uh, and shouldn't be too far behind. Lots of chassers being deployed here. A little bit of air support here trying to whip some of these VDBs. But it looks pretty solid that, in fact, BPT will be able to secure this position. Uh, all the while, we're seeing some pretty wild west tactics here. Some uh, SPU 15Ks are going to try to move towards a forward location. Might even try and go for one of these factories. But no, actually going to go for the jungle. It's not going to be too risky. And looks like we're going to see... Uh, Things move into a stalemate type scenario, except it's not really favoring NATO right now. We have a plus three for for no unit as actually a little bit of badness happening here. This command was severely slow by the snaring and now another one coming out. So they might be able to stop the bleeding just as soon as they can get into this golf location. But once again, uh, no unit will be staging their forces here and probably trying to go into this golf location. So this will be heavily, heavily defensive. And this is what I was kind of talking about. This is... Uh, a roadblock and if unfortunately if NATO can't prevent them from getting through here they're just going to be able to slide through here and grab a two point base now they are moving up some Harpons and some Rollins, these are AT and AA but it just might not be enough and they finally grabbed this forward reinforcement point so they will be able to get some reinforcements here however possibly not enough, looks like we have two Napalms going to strike Pretty brilliantly, actually, able to strike the Chassers directly in the city. And these BTR-60 PBs are move along the side here and try and wipe them out. Now, of course, there are some Amex 10s to support here, and they do have an AT gun on them, so they should be able to deal with these BTR-60 PBs, but not before the infantry's kill. And just look at these great lines of fire here. It means that these vehicles have to go through this way, in which they have to engage directly and can't go into this, or they have to go this way, and they can't engage at all. Now it looks like we're seeing some uh, forces being thrown away here by the Lemieux, throwing away some anti-infantry vehicles. Not too big of a loss. He will be moving at TO-55, however, to try and add a little more flamer power to the forward lines, and actually able to secure this Echo Base. They might be able to actually bring in a command here and continue the bleeding, which is a big, big part of this. And of course, no unit uh, are absolutely a lover of position play. They do love the macro play. And that's what they're going for. They're going for lots of big units. And they're using perfect pinpoint micro to do this. TO-55 is going to wind up. Looks like he's going to be firing some AT rounds at some infantry here. And no, actually going to be rolling out that napalm. Look at that. And actually able to pit exactly where the Chassers are. And are burning them alive. Without the cover of the jungle, they're in trouble. And these TO-55s are on the move command while napalming. That is a really impressive micro here. And, ooh, got to pull back from this hard pawn however, because that could be problematic. But able to actually build some ground here, so no unit getting a pretty solid start in what is looking like one of the most one-sided finals we will see in quite some time. And by quite some time, I could possibly mean a week. That's really what it could mean. A full week could be a long time. And still not seeing a command vehicle being placed. It looks like they're going to try and hold it at Bravo for now, maybe? Or maybe it's going to go for a Delta as well. That is also a possibility. Yes, might be going for Delta. It's very, very secure here. All the while, he's still trying to battle back to the position. Of course, Echo is a little more vulnerable because there's a very fast reinforcement point here, and he can stage a lot of AT and a lot of AA in this location. Uh, looks like a Shubika will, in fact, catch a Puma on the move and will hit it down. There is, of course, four Rainbow behind in the lines, but they should get cleaned up relatively soon. And these TO55 scores are now starting to not pay off too well as the Harpons are just tanking them in numbers. Moto's Jetokis have hit this hit this town here, but without cover, looks like they'll go down pretty quickly. Uh, T-55 still trying to pound away at these Harpons, but not really a cost effective trade. I mean, Harpons are a mere 20 and your T-55s are 30. Not really going to favor, and the Harpons, unfortunately, are just overwhelmingly stronger with both rockets and tank destroyers. 
So T55 is finally pulling back, and we're going to stop this pushback and try and macro up a little bit to get some more units. All the while, this AT barrage just continues going on, and he's just rallying at nothing but AT. He's got the Harpon, which is one of the most powerful AT vehicles in the game, and he's pulling at these anti-tank gun Milans, which of course are your AA infantry, and ooh, just lost that for almost nothing. But trading very, very cost effectively. The bleeding has officially stopped, by the way. And that's signaled by this two point base. And it looks like a, a one point base might be snagged here from Delta, from the no unit clan, who are kind of on the verge to a total perfect victory. I, 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 I suspect that at the end of this match, BP team might start, you know, rolling their head around nauseated like in Mortal Kombat, and we might see a finishing maneuver. Uh, alternatively, you might just see the, the standard good strategic play we're used from seeing from No Unit, who, once again, are one, one of the better teams in the in the game, and they practice, and they do earn their victories. Uh, Rima will get picked off by a lot of infantry and a tank, but the Harpon is actually getting some pretty solid shots off the tank. Double miss there, and Harpon actually going down as well, so suddenly things are not looking so good. There's a, a nice little flanking maneuver, of course. There is a ridge here, so this is completely invisible, and if he can move his infantry into an effective position this could be pretty brutal now obviously he can't see this infant this this vehicle here but that was such an amazing opportunity to really change the game and these amc 10 rc sbs which gotta be a french deck this has gotta be a french deck here from uh from robin 30 gonna get caught the infantry are immediately found looks like a napalm will go down this location to try and support as some packed infantry are going to try and snag this position now of course a lot of people try to cheap out the the perfect ideal is that every single one of these towns has an infantry in it but a lot of times you'll cheap out like well there's no way he's getting this one so i won't guard this one and, and there's no way he's gonna get you know this one here so no need to put there this is an example where uh, cheaping out, of course, not really paying so much, but no unit did deal with it very effectively. The Rima actually moving out of the town, the protection of the town, and the Vice Sicarius should be able to take that very, very quickly. Now, of course, these vehicles are empty. They will be moving away. Not wanting to throw them away. Uh, there's kind of a trade-off. You can tra If you're trading them from rockets, they tend to be very effective because rocket-based weaponry doesn't go up very high with veterancy, but if you throw them away relentlessly, like you're just giving them free veterancy, uh, so it looks like we have a pretty solid move up here at Delta as well as Echo, both faces taken. So no unit, going to be the t plus two on the, the conquest mode, and looks like more infantry moving into this location here. We'll get picked off immediately by AMC 10 tower, and ooh, this is not a good position right now. Wants to get these infantry in here so bad that just deal with these AVs in the least. And we have a call of attack from Vernon Vinehol. He says there is a moderate miscalculation in the in the matrix. Somebody please deal with it in the Vice Akari. They're moving to this town. Should be able to deal with the VAB and maybe something to get these amazing tank destroyers. Nothing has come to the challenge so far. So we're going to hit the mid game. Looks like we're going to see uh, pretty well relentless napalming here from uh, Bernhard Leinhold. Has been using these very effectively so far and will actually lose that one. That was actually not very good. I shouldn't be talking up too much. And this napalm here. We'll kill off this one vehicle here, not too bad, and might actually be able to get the uh, Milans down to... Ooh, there we go, Milans are down, and this AT position is in fact down. Might be worth the Napalm vehicle. Hard to say, we'll have to see how it goes. Usually when you do something like that, if you can follow up, you're fine. Here comes a, a little bit of a helicopter, a mid-game helicopter on. This is um, very odd, and I'm very suspicious of this team. It's possible they helicopter all in their way to this finals and ooh, just not working tunguskas and shilkas all being micro just too good and everything's being dropped in the open some of these might be able to get some targets uh tunguska will in fact survive so actually nothing being grabbed here at all as um the enemy is able to or sorry no unit sorry not the enemy the no unit was actually able to pick up every single one that was just a very very costly engagement of course the helicopter all in is very effective when people don't expect it and it doesn't really work against no unit because they have ridiculous amounts of AA always. Could become the new meta of the game. Vernon is going to move his command a little bit to a safer location. And the, the big thing that's going on right now is we have a staging of AA and AT along this southern flank. He's trying to move in here so he can kind of grab a position forward and stop all the reinforcements. And that is all the reinforcements. There's 
literally nothing defending this location. Everything is being reinforced this golf base into this middle area because this is what's really, really vulnerable right now. But this box draw is just completely open to attacks. So we're going to speed on a little bit ahead here. No unit does have that plus two and looks like we're going to enter our mid game, our prep phase, the point in the game where everyone's just making small moves and not going to go for a big attack just yet. Now we have another two commands coming out here. What is going on here? Are they using extra commands just in case they lose their original commands? Are they that rich? Are they big of ballers? They could also be possibly going for a big attack soon and wanting to move that command into position immediately. That's also possible. They do have the extra commands just sitting there. It's interesting. Um, I kind of suspected that people would eventually do this, that they would have, instead of having like one command tank for 280 or 270, they would have two 100 point vehicles up front. And if you lose one, well, you still have the other. And that way there's no interruption to this at all. And this could actually just be the end. Uh, not exactly close. Oh my god, that was huge! Two vehicles able to actually pick off the golf command here. Now it's absolute bleeding. Um, unfortunately, it looks like Rob is in trouble now. It looks like they're going to try and do a little bit of desperation push. Small amounts of forces using these Lob 25s, which of course NATO players love to abuse. They do insanely high amounts of damage. Actually dropping up the US Marine here and might actually snag both commands, which are of course too close to each other. And not even going to move. It doesn't even see this. I don't think he sees this. This could be a huge game breaker. And finally he sees it. The U.S. Marines are stunned. Good timing. Oh, just get one of the commands. There's still a second command here. And this is what I'm talking about. The kind of the weird meta play here. They're expecting that once they killed that, they'd be fine. But there's another command here. The U.S. Marines are moving up. They're getting into range of it. This command has got to move eventually. Sooner rather than later. When will the U.S. Marines actually spot this out? They do, in fact, and the, the command is being pulled back just barely in time. And no, actually not in time. Looks like it will, in fact... Oh, never mind. I was an idiot. <laughs> it does get pulled back just in time. Barely survives. He will hold on to this region. Uh, T-64 BVI for supporting from this region here with a helicopter. We're going to pick off the other U.S. Marines. And looks like these U.S. Marines will get cleaned up. And they just lost a 100-point command for basically nothing. They haven't lost any actual positions here. Now we do have another vehicle coming up here, two vehicles in fact, we're going to go for his double vehicle as well. And just trying to secure that base to stop the bleeding, but it's over, it's over people, it's already done. Uh, there's only 10 more points left to do, absolute solid, perfect game from the Dell Unit Clan, doing very, very well here. Congratulations to Lemieux and Werner Weinhold. Of course, this is a cash tournament, of course it does happen every week, and if you want to sign up, you have to go to the ESL website, sign up, and when the time comes for sign up, make sure you get there early. Make sure you sign up right away, because if you don't sign up right away, you can't get a spot. There's only 64 spots last week. They filled up, and I think the North American ladder was not full. So definitely try the North American ladder first, if you can, you know, stay up that late, I should say. Uh, but absolutely, congratulations to the Moon, Vernher Vinehold. It is a cash tournament. They did take home, I think it's $200 a week, 200 euros. Uh, so congratulations to them. And uh, hopefully we'll see him in the finals again next week as returning champions. My name is Showmaker. Thank you for joining in. If you want to see more from the ESL, if you want to see more Go For War game, definitely subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing these every single week. See you guys next week.